Okay. And um, now I'm get, I got an understanding of why I was doing this because actually we, I would go to you guys' website and see what times y'all, uh, you know what I'm okay. saying? So yeah. I wasn't really looking at the more. I, was I just, got you. You know what I mean? I got you. You was that, going off of what was already set in place. Right. That's why I pulled up. All praise to the most high. I'm going to tell you something. <clears throat> we're not a recruiting. Like, we're not out here to be like, hey, bro, join our camp. We're only out here to tell you to keep God's commandments. <laughs> Statue of Commandments. You gotta keep the. Uh, it's for remembrance. Okay. Remembrance to do what? To keep the, the commandments. All praises. So you have some already. Yes, sir. But you need more. Okay. You mind show me? Show me. Oh, I don't have any on me right now. Okay. Okay. So it's pretty hard for you right now to remember to keep those commandments, and you don't got them all, right? I got you. So. Not only at Hobby Lobby and Joanne, also on another website, Original Royalty. Original Royalty. Dot org. That's right. You sound familiar. You've been there before? No, no, no. Uh, I've okay. never been there. Are you familiar with us? Yes, sir. Okay. You uh, made a statement. You said you were in the truth for 13 years. Yes, sir. Okay. Who you congregate with? Um, it's just me and a couple brothers. We uh, have Bible study every week. Okay. And we come together. Okay. We do our thing. We're not. We don't. We're not a camp or anything. We're just brothers who congregate. Okay. Okay. How many brothers? Um, we on the phone. It's it between fifteen, uh, ten, fifteen people. Oh, that's nice. That's real good. All praise to the Most High. Um, you do you congregate because you're supposed to? All praise to the Most High. And my other question is, you ask for where we're located? Uh, yeah, where are y'all located? Okay, we're in Benson. In Benson, okay. In Benson, North Carolina. You got your phone, you can scan that QR code too? Yeah, that's right. I came off a plantation. Huh? I think we came off a plantation in Benson. So you're a native to North Carolina? Absolutely. That's where you're from. Okay, yes, I got you. I got you. All right. So, are you planning on visiting our school? Uh, I haven't planned on it, but uh, I wouldn't mind. Okay, okay. Um, I definitely wouldn't mind. Are y'all gonna start something, or y'all just where y'all gather at? Uh, we uh, I actually have a, a location like a, a little event lounge, okay. and we gather there, and we have All Bible friends. study there on the Saturday. Yes, sir. Okay, For sure. Even to even. What's that? From evening to evening. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 Um, give me numbers. Yeah. Watch this. I want to remind you. Let's get it. All praises the Most High. Come on. It's the Book of Numbers, chapter fifteen, verse thirty-eight. Come on. Speak. Unto the children of Israel, uh -huh. and bid them that they make fringes in the border of their garments. So, what tribe are you from? Judah. Judah, all praise to the Most High. Go ahead. Throughout their generation, uh -huh. and that they put on by the fringe of the border a ribbon of blue. Uh -huh. And it shall be unto you for a fringe uh -huh. that ye may look upon it. That ye may what? That ye may look upon it. Read. And remember all the commandments of the Lord. So that's the reason why we do it, because it's a commandment. So we can remember all the commandments of the Lord. So now, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. Oh, that's all good, Elder. Bear with me. Bear with me. Nope, not Elder. It's the brother. I'm just looking. I'm just looking at the... Oh, all praise to the Most High. Um, when y'all congregate, who's teaching? Uh, I have an elder that teaches. He's uh, been in the truth for a while. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. All praises. Um, what do y'all teach? I want to. I want to know. What's the name of the group? It's not a group. Y'all just come together. Just brothers who keep the commandments. We know who we are, and we know where we at. We know what we got to do to get out of where we at. Okay. All right. All praises. Um, you know Passover's coming. You know the new moon. No, Purim is coming. Purim is coming. All praises. Y'all keep the full moon? Um, see, uh, uh, not really. Not really. I, we even got into that too much with the studies. I've been in 13 years, but I, don't, I never kept the full moon. Okay, what moon have you kept? 
Uh, we, I was doing the new moon, but you know, I gotta get what, get back familiar. Okay, so what is your new moon? What is the new moon to you? Let me ask you that way. Uh, enlighten me, because uh, I'm I'm not really sure. So that. I know you're keeping the Sabbath, okay. right? Give me numbers twenty-eight, and I want to say verse nine, so nine or eleven. I'm, I'm hip shooting. Oh. Uh, so as, as far as the uh, new moon, you said uh, that's a, that's something we observe. That is a feast day. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, that is a feast day. I want to show it to you. Watch this. Yeah. It's the book of Numbers, chapter 28, verse 11. Come on. Oh. And in the beginnings of your month. And when? And the beginnings of your month. Uh huh. Ye shall offer a burnt offering Three. unto the Lord. Uh huh. Two young bullocks. Uh huh. And one ram. Seven lambs of the first year without spot. So it's just talking about, because it's numbers, it's letting us know in the beginning of our months, give me Leviticus, in the beginning of our months, we're to do that sacrifice because it was a feast day. Drop that, give me numbers. Of course, um, what's up? As far as like that feast day, when it's talking about the sacrifice, we don't deal with sacrifice anymore. Not at all. Okay, no, so we, we, we would still observe the moon even though we don't deal with the sacrifice. Yes, did you know on the Sabbaths we had to do sacrifices as well, okay. but yet we observed the Sabbath like you said you were doing, right? I'll show it to you. Go back to Numbers 28, you there? Give me verse 9. Watch this. Verse 9. And on the Sabbath day. On what day? And on the Sabbath day. Uh -huh. Two lambs of the first year uh -huh. without spot. So it's just letting us know what the priests had to offer on those set days. Now Leviticus 23. Watch this. So the Lord has already ordained certain feasts that we keep. You don't do Christmas. Okay. Valentine's Day, New Year's, none of those things. All praise to the Most High. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that there's another <coughs> ordained day that you, I'm not going to say you're not doing. But I'm going to show it to you. It's, it's, it's for, uh, fair for you to say that. Okay. All right. All praise to the Most High. Watch this. Give me Leviticus 23. And where is trumpets? There it is. Verse 24. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 24. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, Read. saying, And the seventh month, and the first day of the month. What, what day? And the first day of the month. Uh-huh. Shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets? So he ordained that the seventh month, the first day of the seventh month, he called that the memorial of trumpets. Now get me Exodus. You do. Blowing of the trumpets. Blowing of the trumpets. Okay, so it can only be kept on the new moon. New moon means month, means the beginning of a month. Watch this. Exodus 12, and let me get verse 1. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 1. So Exodus 12 gets into just before we kept the Passover, right? The Lord is now about to bring the 10th plague, killing the firstborns on Egypt, right? right? But look what he tells Moses. Read it from the top. And the Lord spoke unto Moses uh -huh. and Aaron uh -huh. in the land of Egypt, Read. saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of month. He said, this month shall be the beginning of months unto you. The reason I pulled that scripture is because, drop that, get me Sirach 43. Watch this. I have to show it to you. In order for Moses to say that this month is the beginning of months, he had to show them something. Something had to be there. The book of Sirach, chapter 43, uh -huh. verse 6. Read. He made the moon also. He made the what? He made the moon also Read. to serve in her season uh -huh. for a declaration of time. So the moon was made for a declaration of time. I'm going to explain. Hold that. Give me Genesis 1 and 14. Bring it out. Just bear with me. Just bear with me. All praises. Genesis 1 and 14. Come on. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 14. You know? said the moon was made for a declaration of what? Time. Time. Yes, sir. You said you keep the Passover, correct? For sure. You only know when to keep the Passover according to the moon. I'm going to show it to you. Come on. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 14. You know? And God said, let there be lights uh -huh. in the firmament of the heavens. 
it. It said, let there be light with an S. So there's more than one. Read. To divide the day from the night. So there's a light that's during the day, which is the what? The sun. The sun, very good. And the other light at night would be the mm -hmm. all praises. But why would it be called a light at nighttime? No. We, gotta, we have to ask those questions Bound because be there must be night. something there. That's why earlier I used the term full moon. If you have a crescent moon, there's a little light. But the very first moon was a what? All praises. Read on. Read it from the top. One more time. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven Read. to divide the day uh -huh. from the night. Come on. And let them be for signs uh -huh. and for seasons Read. and for days uh -huh. and years. Come on. And let them be for light uh -huh. and the firmament of the heaven. It said, let them be for signs, seasons, days, and years. It said that for the purpose of what? Let's go back to Sarah 43. Watch this. Come on. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 43, verse 6. Three. He made the moon also uh -huh. to serve in her season. Because everything God created, it has commandments. The water, the sun, the moon, everything has a commandment that God gave it. He said the moon was made for what? Read it again. He made the moon uh -huh. also Read. to serve in her season Come on. for a declaration of time Come on. and a sign of the world. Read. From the moon uh -huh. is the sign of beast. It's the what? A sign of beast. It said for the moon is a sign of beast because in order to keep all of the high holy days of Leviticus, you have to know when the month begins. Because he's very specific. He says, on the first moon will be a new month unto you. Read on. A light. That whoa, whoa. A what? A light. A what? A light. A what? A light. So a light. Because guess what? There's other camps that teach that the new moon is the dark moon. The so-called Jewish men, they teach that it's the crescent moon. God said that the, it's a what? A light uh -huh. that decreases in her perfection. So it decreases in her perfection. Meaning the full is the beginning. And then it, what's it called? Waiting, waiting, a waiting moon, I say? Waning. Waxing and waiting, meaning it increases and decreases. So it goes into 15 stages down to where there's no moon. And then it increases back up into the full moon. You with me? Read on. The month is called whoa, whoa. the what? The month. The what? The month. But he didn't call it moon there. He said the month is what? Is called after her name. Now go back to Exodus. Now watch this. Because your elder had to learn it from somewhere. That's how our elder did. He learned it from somewhere and then the Lord started dealing with him and then his wisdom increased, right? Watch this. Exodus 12, one more time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We just got, uh, we actually just linked with uh, with our elder that we, uh, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And um, now I'm get, I got an understanding of why I was doing this because actually we, I would go to you guys' website and see what times y'all, uh, yes, you know what I'm okay. saying? So I yeah. wasn't really looking at the more. I, was I just, got you. You know what I mean? I got you. You was that, going off of what was already set in place. Right, that's why I pulled All up. All praise to the most high. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> We're not a recruiting like we're not out here to be like hey bro join our camp we're only out here to tell you to keep god's commandments that's, that's right you said you congregating all praises you said you're keeping the sabbath all praises now you're going to know how to keep the moon properly watch this read 12 and 1. it's the book of exodus chapter 12 verse 1 uh -huh. and the lord spake unto moses read. and aaron uh -huh. in the land of egypt saying come on this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. So in order for Moses to say that, he had to see something. We just read it in Sirach 43. It didn't call it moon. It said this month. But we read it's the beginning of the months. Watch this. Now give me numbers. As a matter of fact, go back to Leviticus 23. Watch this. In Leviticus 23, you have a list of the majority of the high holy days. I say majority because 
through a process of time others were instituted, right? Watch this. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 5. Sorry, give me verse 2 first. Yes, sir. Verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel uh -huh. and say unto them Read. concerning the feast of the Lord. Concerning what? Concerning the feast of the Lord. So every single feast day is ordained as a Sabbath. The only difference is you are allowed to do what? Ah, there you go. Come on. Which ye shall proclaim uh -huh. to be holy convocations. When it says holy convocation, what's that mean? What is your name, my brother? I get, uh, you call me Lee. Lee, Brother my name Lee. is Menahem. Nice to meet you, bro. Yes, sir. So, Lee, it said, these are feasts and they're holy convocations. What's that mean? A gathering. A gathering, but what kind? A holy gathering. Yes. Gather, uh, Give me, I need one, I'll tell you, I'll explain yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, Of like-minded people. Right, because in a Christian church, you go to the Christian church, and everyone's in there doing their own thing, but they gather on Sunday and they think they're having a holy convocation. Teacher. It's not the same. Read it again from the top, verse 2. Yes, sir. Verse 2. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel uh -huh. and say unto them Read. concerning the feast of the Lord, uh -huh. which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Uh -huh. Even these are my feast. Now, verse 3. Verse 3. The very first feast he mentions is this. Come on. Six days shalt thou. Six days shall work be done. What feast is he getting into? Uh, is this 11 bread? Nope. It says six days shall work be done. Passover. Nope. Watch this. Read it again. Read verse 3. I got you. I only asked because you said you do it. I, so I, mean, I, wanted... I, didn't, I, I was answering without anything. I was just throwing them out. I got you. Read verse 3. Six days shall work be done. Uh -huh. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. So what feast is that? The That's the Sabbath. Very good. Now we're going to jump down to verse 5. And then look what he says. Read. Verse 5. Uh -huh. In the 14th day of the first month. So he said, in the 14th day of the first month. Meaning you must know when the moon is in order to count to get to your Passover. That's something that our, our leadership, our elders have figured out. The beginning of months is the full moon. 14 evens from then. Why did I say evens? Teach up. But why? Because that's when the moon is shown. And give me one more. The Sabbath begin on the, uh, the evening. All days according to God begin at even. Okay. Every single day begins at even. For sure. Because remember he said the, uh, the morning, sorry, the, the evening, evening and the morning was the first day. That's how he declared it. And then from that point on, as you read through Genesis 1, Everything started with even and ended with morning. Evening and morning was the third day. Evening and morning was the, and I'm a to you. Go back to Leviticus 23. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 23, verse 32. Read. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, uh -huh. and ye shall afflict your souls. This is talking about the day of atonement. You ever kept that one? What's that concerning? That's concerning your sins, to atone your sins for. How do you do it? Oh. Ah, I like when you, I love those sounds. Watch this, he said, he said, afflict your soul. There's only one way you can do that according to the scriptures. There we go, it's clicking. You have to fast. Biblically, we ain't talking about a diet. We're talking about according to the Bible. Read it from, from the top. Verse 32. Uh -huh. It shall be unto you uh -huh. a Sabbath of rest. Read. And ye shall afflict your soul. Look when you do it, read. In the ninth day uh -huh. of the month, read. at even from even uh -huh. unto even. It said at even unto even. It's a full day according to the Lord. That's right. You see that? So now, in order to do, that's why we read earlier, that it's a sign for feast and a declaration of time. But it starts with the beginning of the month, which is a what? Moon. There we go. That's what I want to hear. A full moon. I ain't used to being on this side. I'm used to being. You all right? You all right? So y'all go out and teach as well? We had before. Y'all had before. All praises here in Fayetteville. Mm -hmm. All praises to the Most High. <coughs> what commandment is that? What, nope. that? what commandment is that? To go out and teach? Yeah. Ooh. Uh, I'm not sure which commandment it is, but I know it is a commandment. Okay. All right. Give me Ezekiel. Nope. Give me Luke. 
If you're getting a lot of your information from us, I'll let you make that decision. I'll let you make that decision. Watch this. Come on. This is the book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 23. Read. And the Lord said unto the servant, uh -huh. go out into the highways and hedges Read. and compel them to come in uh -huh. that my house may be filled. So we come out here. Because Christ commanded it. Christ commanded it. Give me uh, Proverbs 1. For sure. For sure. That's our. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 20. With wisdom crieth out. Uh -huh. She uttereth her voice in the streets. Where? Well, in the streets. So we are commanded to go and bring wisdom out in the streets. Because if we didn't, we wouldn't have ran into Lee. We wouldn't have ran, and you would have only been looking at IUIC on the website. <laughs> Lord's will things change. Read it again. Wisdom cried, wisdom cried without. Uh -huh. She uttered her voice in the streets. Read. She cried in the chief place of concourse. It says she cries in the chief place of concourse. Now, get me Second Ezra 14. The reason why I ask you if y'all go out and teach, right, is because it's a other requirement outside of commandment. Outside of that, you have to be, you have to be right in order to get others right. I don't know your inner sins outside of the, the lack of fringes. I got to point that out because guess what? If any of us decide to wake up one day and we forget because that has happened, I was late for work. I'm going to tell you why I was late for work. Because I got dressed, I had a, a work uniform, and I left the house. I got in the parking lot, got out the car, said, oh, I'm about to be late. I went home. Why? I'm commanded to. You understand that? Read that. This is the book of 2nd Edward, chapter 14, verse 14. Yep. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Uh -huh. Cast away the burdens of man. Verse. Yep, verse 13. Yes, sir. Verse 13. Uh -huh. Now, therefore, set thine house in order. God said, you got to get your house in order. You married? Yes, sir. Are you all praises to the most high? Three. Wife and kids? Yes, sir. All praises. How many kids? Four. Four? That's what I'm talking about. You got boys? Two. Two. All praises to the Lord. You got a package there. Yes, sir. Two boys, two girls. All praises to the most high. Read it again. Now, therefore, set thine house in order uh -huh. and reprove thy people. God said, once we got right, then we're able to come out here and give correction to our people. That's the only way it's going to work because we have to be a light. We have to be able to go, look, wear fringes. That's right. Look, don't mar your beard. Look, go out into the streets and teach. teach but it first starts with you getting right firstly. You got to get right first. Sure. Read it again. Now therefore, uh -huh. set thine house in order and reprove thy people. Uh -huh. Comfort such of them as be in trouble. Uh -huh. And now renounce corruption. And then do what? And now renounce corruption. Uh -huh. Let go from thee, mortal thoughts. So we have to let go from our mortal thoughts. Where the things that we want and that we lust after, God said, let go of those things. Keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. Pastor. I got another one. You said you're married. Yes, sir. How long have you been married? Um, might as well say since so we was uh, high school sweethearts. I'm 35, so. Might as well uh, say? I mean, according to scripture, I don't have the paperwork with the, uh, but according to scripture, that's my wife. Oh, what do you mean? I, I've laid with her and procreated with her. That's my wife. Okay. And you said that's according to scripture. Okay. I'm going to show you something. Guess what, my brother? You have to have marriage people. Bring it out. You have to. Drop that. Give me uh, Romans first. Romans 13. I want to show you something. And I've never, I'm glad you're showing me this. All praise to the most high. Let me tell you something. The Lord is a mastermind. The Lord moves on a different level. A lot of times, even us, we'll come out here 
with the zeal, just ready to go. But we really don't understand how much we're going to affect someone's life. We don't understand how much wisdom that the Lord is going to impute in them. You understand what I'm saying? Watch this. You got on what? 13 and start at verse 1. Yes, sir. This is the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 1. Come on. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. So when it says every soul is subject to the higher powers, Lee, what does that mean? To be subject to something is to learn from the okay. higher powers. To what? To learn from the higher powers. Right? To be subject to something. Yes. So my question to you is, as an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, yes, what nation of people are you to be subject to right now? Uh, the nation of Israel. No. Mm. We're in the land of our captivity. So we are in subjection. Okay, I got you. I got you. I got you. We're going to read it again one more time. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. No. For there is no power of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. That's why, man, I get what you're saying now. That's just one you. point. I got you. I like that. That's just that. one. We're going to show you what scripture where was God, that? that was Romans 13. So, smoking weed, dealing drugs, what else? Killing, stealing. God used the powers that be to set up the judicial system to help his people keep his commandments. He said he ordained them. Watch this. You got Tobit? All yes, praise sir. now. We must respect the powers that be. You know why? Uh, I'm going to make a quick point. God forbid something happens to you. Your life insurance is supposed to go to your wife, correct? Correct. How is anyone going to know if it ain't on paper? Take it out. As men, we have to have things done in writing. Uh, give me that first. The book of Sarah, chapter 42 and verse 7. Read. Deliver all things in number and weight. Uh -huh. And put all in writing. And do what? And put all in writing. God says put everything in writing. God is a, when he, he didn't give a verbal covenant. He wrote it down on two tables of stone. And told Moses to write it down. He told the prophets, every prophecy, write it down. He said when you have a vision, Write it down. Look what else he said. Now give me Tobit. Watch this. The book of Tobit, chapter 7 and verse 13. Uh -huh. Then he called his daughter Sarah, uh -huh. and she came to her father. Read. And he took her by the hand Come on. and gave her to be wife to Tobias. So this is a marriage ceremony. Just like how you today in the world, the father walks who down the aisle? His daughter to give her to the husband. Sure. That's another reason that you got to get right. Because you got two girls. You want to be able to do the same tradition as the Bible says. Read on. Saying, behold, take her after the law of Moses. Whoa. After what? After the law of Moses. Read. And lead her away uh -huh. to thy father. Uh -huh. And he blessed them and called Edna his wife. Read. And took paper. And did what? And took paper. Come on. And they write an instrument of covenants. That's what the purpose of the paper is for. If me and you get into business, how is anyone going to know we have a business? We have to have a contract. It must be written down. So Lee, guess what? You said y'all been together since high school? I got to say it. I'm sorry. I'm cheap. Listen, go to the courts. That's right. right. That's the only way you're going to be able to get the papers. That's right. Do what God says. Confirmation. Confirmation. That's what it is because it's a covenant, not only with you and your wife, but also God is going to respect and honor that thing. That's right. Get me Hebrews. You know what I want you there? All yes. praises. Come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 4. Come on. Marriage is honorable in all. Come on. And the bed undefiled. Read. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. God said a whoremonger is a male or female who sleeps around. But adulterer is someone who goes outside of marriage. So guess what y'all been doing this whole time? Okay. Nope. Cause you ain't married. Right. Y'all fornicating, you just happen to be the same partner. <laughs> Watch this, 1 Corinthians 7. 
This is this is this is why the Lord puts it puts the prophets in place. Because it's our job to turn you away from sin. You gotta repent and return back to God. But guess what? You gotta learn it first. Man, Let's bring it out. Turn. I made a wrong turn and came down here. You made a wrong turn? And was right about to turn, turn left. And I was like, let me go see what these brothers are. I gotta ask them about the fringes. Ah. That's what brought me over here. No, no, you, you thought that's what brought you over here. <laughs> it was the Lord. That's right. right. Yeah, that's yeah. That was the most high God. Give me that after this. Yes, Somebody sir. find me uh, a man's goings of the Lord. Come on, read that. The book of 1 Corinthians, the 7 and verse 2. Read. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. So to stop what you're doing, because right now you have to four children with the same woman. This whole time y'all been procreating for what's been missing. Marriage. Marriage. Hey, I'm, I'm going to touch on something next. Uh, read that again. Yeah, he got it. Go back to, um, yep, read that. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7 and verse 2. Come on. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, uh -huh. let every man have his own wife, uh -huh. and let every woman have her own husband. God said, using the scriptures, to avoid fornication. Mm -hmm. Why would you need to avoid fornication? Because it's sin. That's why we read that marriage is honorable. And that bed, when a man and a woman lay together, that's not defiled. That's not defiled. Something actually starting to bother me. You got the Proverbs? Yes, sir. I want to show you something. Something's starting to fire, put a set of fire in my spirit, Lee. And I'm happy you're here. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20 and verse 24. Yeah. Man's goings are of the Lord. Read. How can a man then understand his own way? You had no idea. You said you made a wrong turn. That's the term you use. You made a wrong turn. Guess what? The Lord is merciful. Give me Matthew 5. I want Matthew 5. Start at verse 14. I want to show you something. Because something's starting to... You used some words earlier. You said you was in the truth for how long? 13 years. Bring it up. I covered those numbers. I wish I was in the truth that long. I haven't been. His eyebrows went up. You thought I might have been in the truth that long. Let me tell you the difference between what I'm doing and what you're doing. Uh oh. I have to show it to you. Watch this. Give me verse 14. The book of Matthew, to the 5 and verse 14. Come on. Ye are the light of the world. Read. A city that is set on a hill uh -huh. cannot be hid. So this is going back to your fringes. It said that ye are a light in the world and a city that can't be hid. That's who we are. We are the Israelites. We cannot be hid. And the way that we hide ourselves is by not keeping the commandments. That's right. Now watch this. Give me verse 17. Verse 17. Uh -huh. Think not that I have come to destroy the law. This is talking about our Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Read on. Or the prophets. Uh -huh. I am not come to destroy, Read. but to fulfill. Come on. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, uh -huh. one jot or one tittle uh -huh. shall in no wise pass from the law. So he's letting us know that we still have to keep the commandments. That's right. I think you understand that. Sure. But now I'm going to get to the point that's bothering me. I have to get to the point that's bothering me. And it's going to be offensive. It's all good. Let's go. All praise to the most high. Read on. Till all be fulfilled. Uh -huh. Verse 19. Read. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments Come on. and shall teach men so. Ah, that's the point I want. 13 years in the truth, Lee. Whoever you learning from ain't doing a good job. Yes. I'm going to just tell you straight. Because I was uh, walking with the captain, Captain Shea, and he said, Hey, officer, you ever realize whenever we go out and teach, brothers from other camps always come up to our camp? I said, you know what, I never paid attention to that. Why is that? He said, because their spirit is learning and yearning for something. That's right. There's something missing wherever they at that they always have to come to where the commandments are. Really? It was the heaviest thing I said. I never thought about that. And after he said it, I said to myself, if I see another camp teaching, I'm just going to say all praises. I don't need and want for anything to go over there 
because I'm getting it right here. Bruh. You get what I'm saying? But the scripture says this. Read it again. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments uh -huh. and shall teach men so. So, you didn't know the new moon. You didn't understand the proper way of marriage. You're being guided and it ain't right. That's why I said something's setting a fire in me because when a brother walk up and tell me he keeping the commandments, I need to be able to see it. I need it to come out of your speech. It says a man of understanding, give me that, Sirach 19. It shows by his walk and his gait and his speech. Watch this, Sirach 19, 27, I think it is. The last two verses, come on. The book of Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 29. Read out. A man may be known by his looks. So there's times, and brothers probably would contest to this, when we're coming out of the store, and a brother goes shalom. Wonder why he say that. <laughs> why do you think he would say that? Friends. Yes. Because we are a light in this world. Read. A man may be known by his look. Come on. And one that had understanding by his countenance. By his countenance. His countenance. Pick your chin up right quick and take a look. Okay. His beard all right. You all right. But listen, you ain't learning, my brother. 13 years. Watch this. Give me all. Um, I'll finish that out and then give me Matthew 23. When thou meetest him, uh -huh. a man's attire and accept of laughter uh -huh. and gait uh -huh. show what he is. Not that. Now give me Matthew 23. Watch this. Christ warned us of something. Christ gave the Israelites a warning. I want to show you what it is. Watch this. So, just read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 23 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, uh -huh. saying, The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So we're always going to have leaders. Like, if you didn't know you were Israelite, I'll be using the same scripture to talk about your pastor, to talk about your reverend or your deacon. They sit in the seat of Moses, meaning they're supposed to be doing something. Hold that. It's supposed to be what? The seat of the law. The seat of Moses. Uh, Malachi 2. Very true. You hit it on the head. But we have people who guide people, and there's no growth. There's no growth. You can't have been in the truth for the time that you said you've been in the truth. Don't know. That upsets me. That upsets me. Watch this. Hey, me too. All praises. Hey, watch this. Got it? Malachi 2, come on. The book of Malachi, to the 2 and verse 7. Read. For the priest's lips uh -huh. should keep knowledge. Read. And they should seek the law at his mouth. It said the priest's lips, your leader, the one who's been teaching you. It said his lips, read it again. The priest's lips should keep knowledge. Is that a suggestion? No. That is commanded. That's why I said you got to get right. And then you go out and you teach your people. Read on. And they should seek the law. Nice and slow. And what? And they. And what? And they. And they. The people who he's supposed to be teaching to is the they. The Israelites. Right. Should what? Should seek the law at his mouth. So when you're there on those Sabbath days when y'all gather together, you're supposed to be asking him questions. That's right. You're supposed to be dealing. You shouldn't be having to go to somebody else's website to figure out when to keep God's commandments. That's right. I suggest, I got to say it, if that's what you're doing, you need to go where the commandments is at. Bring it out. How do you get to the kingdom of heaven? Oh, you got what I wanted? Let's read Matthew 23 one time. Matthew 23, come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 23 and verse 1. 1. Uh-huh. Then spake Jesus to the multitude uh -huh. and to the disciples, Come on. saying, The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Read. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe. Meaning, what they teach you, he's saying observe. Mm -hmm. And that's what you've been doing. But now watch this. Read. That observe and do. Come on. But do not ye after their works. Ah. But don't do after their works. That's what's been happening to you. You're sitting under men who don't have understanding of God's laws. Right. 
You understand what I'm saying? And again, it's not no stabs or no shots. I don't know who they are. I'm not even asking you who they are. You know, I actually, whenever I first got in the truth, uh -huh. um, I was listening to Elder Rakai with GLCC and okay. all them. So I never joined the camp. I was just, you know what I'm saying, keeping the commandments, like going, learning on my own. Uh -huh. My older cousin, he was the one who actually brought me into the truth. Okay. But uh, now I linked back up with him uh -huh. and we started doing what we've been doing. So we haven't really been alone. Okay. And I've been pretty stagnant, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And so, yes. Uh, yeah. I believe it. You're, you're, the amount of years that you've known, sure. that ain't right, Lee, to tell you now. A certain level of wisdom needs to be on you the amount of years that you've been in the truth. I'm more of a history guy, so like the history, oh, this right here is what I like to look at. Okay. So that's what I, I'm deep into the history. Watch this, I'm going to help you out. Watch this. Read that, 8 and 30. The book of Acts, chapter 8 and verse 30. Is that what I want? Yes, there you go. And Philip ran thither to him uh -huh. and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. Uh -huh. That's it. Understand thou what thou readest? So we're going to ask you, do you understand what you've been learning for the past 13 years? I'm to my not, to my uh, not, to my understanding, to my own Look what the Bible says. Read. Lean not into your own understanding. And he said, I'm how can you. I except some man should guide me? So you're to be guided by someone who does have understanding. Yeah. That's the only way it's going to work. That's the only way it's going to work. Read on. And he desired Philip that he would come and sit with him. He what? And he desired Philip. That word is heavy. He said he desired Philip that he should come. Give me Sirach 6 and verse 36 or 33. I'm going to take a look. Watch this. He said he desired that Philip should come and sit with him because he wanted to what? Learn. What happens is, because it happened to me, I found out I was Israel. I didn't start congregating. I started trying to keep the Sabbath. I started the dietary law. I put fringes on my clothes. And in a matter of months, I said, This is it? This is all he wanted me to do? And I'm, I'm making the kingdom? This, this, can't, this can't be right. This, this is just as easy as what I was doing before. I said, There has to be a little bit more. So guess what I did? I made the phone call. And then I went to like-minded brothers so I can gain understanding. That's you know what I want? 32? What is it? 36, come on. The book of Sarah, to the 6 in verse 36. All right, jump up. 32. Jump up. You see all the Yep. Verse 32. My son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. Uh -huh. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, uh -huh. thou shalt be prudent. It said, if you want, you understand that you must be taught. Read on. If thou love to hear. If thou what? If thou love to hear. And that's what you've been doing standing here, Lee. That's what you've been doing because the words of God is coming out. Read on. Thou shalt receive understanding. Read. And if thou bow thy ear, uh -huh. thou shalt be wise. He said, if you bow down your ear, ye you shall be wise. Because you must desire to learn. You can't sit in that place and just be, what are y'all doing on the Sabbath? We, um, actually, we were, just, we were talking about the Sabbath. Well, you were talking about the moon. We were really just getting into that. That's why it made me stay longer when you okay. were talking about the moon. Okay, all crazy. So we were actually about to get into that. Who's teaching y'all when y'all sit together? Uh, it's a brother named uh, Elder Ray. Elder Ray, okay. So, okay. He just, he just started congregating with the brother. I got you. I understand. So I want to also let you know. I'm going to show it to you. Read on. Verse 32, 34. Uh -huh. Stand in the multitude of the elders. Read. And cleave unto him that is wise. Do what? Cleave unto him that is wise. Come on. Be willing to hear every godly discourse. Uh -huh. And let not the parables of understanding escape thee. Now give me. Psalms 111 and 10. The book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Ah, uh, the what? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So I asked you, why well, didn't ask you? How do you get to the kingdom? Fear the Lord and keep his statutes and commandments. Keep his statutes and commandments. How many outside of the Sabbath 
and fringes in your beard are you keeping? What was that again? I'm sorry. How many commandments are you keeping outside of the Sabbath, fringes, and your beard? The number of uh, commandments. Yeah, what, what else do you know? Let me, let me not make it so vague. What other commandments do you know? I do got third, a little, you know what I mean? I know, I know a, lot, a lot. That's a lot of, that's a... Shoot me one. That's a big... Shoot me one. A commandment. Yeah. That's not steal. Good. That's not kill. Uh-huh. You know, the basics. Okay, good. Keep, uh, that's keeping the dietary law. Good. Yeah. What, what consists of keeping the dietary law? I want. I just want to see where you at. Uh, the fish and the scales. Good. You know the. Uh, no, of course, no pork. Good. The good. split it with the hood. They eat the cut. The cut. Very good. All praises. No uh, bottom feeders. No crawfish. No, uh, not a bottom feeder. You made a statement earlier. Get it, Leviticus. I want to show you because we we say that. Uh, is that what, like a statement? Yeah, because uh, what what our people do a lot is we try to give an understanding of why God put that in the dietary law. Right. Does that make sense what I'm saying? I do So watch this. Uh, 11 and 9. Let me know what you mean. Look at Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 9. Uh -huh. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, Three. whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, uh -huh. in the seas, and in the rivers, so them shall ye eat. So that's the law. Not about bottom feeders, because guess what? A shark isn't a bottom feeder. Why? Because it doesn't have scales. Or, well, it doesn't have scales, correct, correct. The reason why I'm, I'm it may seem like I'm nitpicking, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm, why I'm, am I doing it? You're trying to figure out where I, what I know, I understand. Give me uh, Ezekiel 3, I'll show you why I'm doing it. Okay. I'll show you exactly why I'm doing it. Watch this. Hey, bro. All praise to the Most High. Lee? Yes, sir. We want salvation for you. That's why we come out here. We want our people to repent and return to the Lord. All right, watch this. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 3 and verse 17. Uh -huh. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. That's what we are. We're watchmen. But it takes a certain level to understand what to look for. Ah, let me ask you a question. Your wife wear pants? What's that? Does your wife wear pants? Uh, around the house. But she has, she wears a lot of, she, for the most part, she wears dresses. For the most part. All right, read this again. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Read. Therefore, hear the word at the Lord at my mouth, uh -huh. and give them warning from me. Give them what? Give them warning from me. Why would the Lord say give them warning? Because there's something to be aware of, to be aware of. Yes, but why? Let me ask you a question. What happens if you don't keep the commandments? That's dead. Ah, that's why he's telling us to warn our people. Because the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Sure. And he ain't talking about dying, like laying in a grave. Because right. that is a curse that's upon all men. He's talking, excuse me, he's talking about the second death, That's right. the lake of fire, eternal damnation. That's, right. That's, That's right. what sin causes our people. Read on. Verse 18. Uh -huh. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, uh -huh. and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked. So he's saying, son of man, go out and give them warning. But when you see the wicked, if you don't give them warning, read. Nor speak is to warn the wicked from his wicked way Come on. to save his life. Read. The same wicked man uh -huh. shall die in his iniquity. So we understand if we don't go out and teach you, we say that you're going to die in your sin. Huh. Why would God bring that up? I think we already know that, right? right. Watch what else he says. Read on. But his blood will I require at thine hand. God said for us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. If we don't warn you, if we don't warn you that the that being in the midst of sin is the wages of death, then our blood is gonna be required from the Lord as well. Because I'm to love you as I love myself. Read on. Yet, 
If thou warn the wicked, uh -huh. and he turn not from his wickedness, Come on. nor from his wicked way, Come on. he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. But we will deliver our soul. Let me do the line 22. Watch this. So you said that your wife sometimes. Nope. Hold that, right? Give me Matthew 5 again. 5 and 19. I got a question about that too, because I've been, uh, I've always been on the fence about the, uh, the wearing pants, because there are female pants, you know, like leggings. Okay. You know, you can't say that's a man thing, because if I see a man wearing leggings, I'd be like, you know right. what I mean? I got you. I'm going to, I'm going to make a statement, right? You seen a man pocketbook? Cut. Why do you laugh, please? It, 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 it pertains to a woman. Wait, 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 wait. No, not, not that. I just want to know why would you laugh. I'm going to tell you a why you laugh. Uh, a man pocketbook. A man pocketbook. It sounds crazy, right? Yeah. Whenever you have to put a gender in front of something, that means it don't belong to them. That's, That's right. right. Woman's pants? That already means it don't belong to them man bra. It's just called a bra when it's on a woman, uh -huh. but when a man wear it, you call it a man bra. That's crazy. A man blouse. But sisters just wear blouses. Like a man dress. These are terms that's out today. Mm -hmm. So, with you that know. statement, what does that mean? She ain't supposed to be wearing them. Right. But watch this. I'm going to tell you why she's having a hard time. Watch this. 14 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 14. Uh -huh. Ye are the light of the world. Uh -huh. A city that is set on a hill Read. cannot be hid. Read on. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. You hear that? It said, neither does that light get tucked away. What you've been doing is tucking away. That's why she wears it sometimes. That's right. Because you're the leader, you agree? What's going on, my brother? You all right? What's your name? Eric. Eric? My name is Benahan. Nice to meet you. Jewel, man. Let me get some. Let me get some. Uh, Jewel. Fill in the beard. You all right? Read that again. Ye are the light of the world. Uh -huh. A city that is set on a hill on. cannot be hid. Uh -huh. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. So that light needs to go out into the world. We brought that out earlier, right? Uh, Deuteronomy 22. So you must first be the example. Remember we read that also, right? Get your what in order? Get your house in order. When you get your house in order, then you're able to go out and teach. Then you're able to be a light. Because then you understand, remember what's the beginning of wisdom? The fear of the Lord. Watch this, read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. My brother, what pertains unto men that woman shouldn't wear? The word pertain means belongs to. Dresses. Read it again. Hold on. I got you. I know why you said that. They should have dresses, but what belongs to men that women shouldn't wear? Oh, man, that's true. I'm going to read it again. Watch this. Come on. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. It said the woman shouldn't wear what pertains, what belongs. That's the word. That's what pertain means. Women shouldn't wear what belongs to men. Right. I'm going to read on. Now I'm going to find out why would the Lord put pertain? Why would he put what belongs? So let me tell you. If you ever read the Bible, you don't hear words like, uh, and, um, you don't read that in the scriptures. Every single word in this Bible has purpose. The words of God is spiritual, so everything has a purpose in it. Read it again from the top. The woman shall not wear uh -huh. that which pertaineth unto a man. Come on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Uh -huh. But all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. You know what we call that today? It's called cross dressing. Bring it out. Men should not see what's the name? Uh uh. Kanye and Kanye would put on a dress. Kid Cuddy. Kid Cuddy, Tyrese. We can keep going. God said don't cross dress. 
That's what the Bible says. That's what is a nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 